Welcome back to The Code Wolf. Today I want to do a quick video about the new AI building blocks for .NET. This was featured at .NET Conf this week, and it's been in preview for a while. There's been a couple of blog posts about it, and I think this is kind of a major topic that's flying under the radar or enough people aren't aware of if you're involved with AI. The channel is almost at 5,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing and hit that like button, and let's dive into it. So we now have this microsoft.extensions.ai package. And really this is a set of packages because there are other packages that are specific for certain models and other things, but we'll worry about that in a minute. The point here is that this package allows you to code against AI abstractions instead of specific SDKs or implementations in your code. And this is a big deal. So over in Azure, I have a few models deployed right now. And we're going to be using these models uh, to connect to in our code and see how this works. I have plenty of other videos on my channel on how to get Azure OpenAI or other AI models and local AI models up and running on your computer. But I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you have a basic understanding of how to connect to AI. I really want this to be a hands-on demo, so let's jump over to Visual Studio. And here I have one of the simplest AI apps you can build. So I'm creating this Azure OpenAI client, and then we get a chat client. And then we prompt our AI model uh, with a, for a completion here. So I'm just asking, do code wolves hibernate? And then we print out the response here. So if I were to run this app, um, after a second, that'll come back from our AI with a response here. So this is basically the simplest possible AI setup, and it gives us this uh, response here. So I'll close out of that. But there's a couple things to note about this app. The first is that this get chat client returns an openai.chat.chat client. It might be hard to see in the pop-up here. But the point is that this is coding against an SDK specific type from the Azure OpenAI or the OpenAI library. And as you go deeper into using AI in your .NET code, you're not necessarily always gonna to wanna to be coding against a specific SDK or a specific type. I think the best comparison for this is something like a logger or even something like Entity Framework, where you might want to be able to swap out the underlying logging provider or just code against an abstraction or an idea rather than a specific implementation. You want to code against the idea of logging or the idea of a database table, but not necessarily a specific technology. And that's what this new extensions library lets us do. So first, let's just convert this simple app to use that extensions library, and then we'll look at something a little more interesting. So to do that, all you have to do is go up to Manage NuGet Packages, and you're gonna to wanna to install the microsoft.extensions.ai.openai library. So this one right here, I've already done that before, and I'm working on .NET 9, which is uh, the very latest as of today. So let's close out of here and go back to our app. And once you have that library installed, instead of get chat client here, we can change this to as chat client, which is an extension method that's provided by that library. So you can see it pulled in this Microsoft extensions AI uh, namespace up here. And that's gonna cause an error down in our code because this method returns an I chat client. Remember before we were using that open AI chat client uh, class or specific implementation. But now we just have this general idea of an iChat client. So I can even put that type here so that's a little more clear. And so down here, the iChat client no longer has a complete chat async method, but we can just change this to complete async, which is very similar, and that'll still bring back our completion. And then this response object is also a little bit different. We just have to change this to message. So all in all, pretty similar code here. And if we run the app just to prove that this still works, everything should be fine. So we're connecting to our same AI model. So testing here is our AI model, if that wasn't clear. Uh, but we get our response back, and so now we're coding against this abstraction. Now, you might still be wondering, well, what is the big deal here? What's so special about this? We just changed a couple lines of code, and our app is the same. Well, that's a great question. So if we go over to our other program, so I have two programs in our solution here. We were just looking at traditional AI, and now let's hop over to extensions AI. And this might look a little scarier at first, but it's still a simple app. It's just doing a couple extra things. So in this app, we have our same old chat client. And so we're still doing what we were doing before. So we have as chat client that returns our iChat client interface. So no changes there. But now we also have this embedding client. And here you can see where it says as embedding generator. 
So this is returning an I embedding generator off of our Azure OpenAI client. So now we have this idea of an embedding generator, and this is not tied to a specific type. So up here, again, you can see we have an iChat client and an I embedding generator. And so let's set our extensions project to be the startup here, and then run this new extensions app. And so when this loads, we'll see this huge series of numbers. That's our embedding. Um, if you don't know what an embedding is, basically this is just a numerical representation of the contextual meaning of our question. Uh, that isn't really important for this video. I'm just showing different AI uh, capabilities here. But we still have our code wolf response here from our chat client. So this is giving us a little more descriptive answer. And then we have our embedding. So there's two different examples of AI functionality here. Uh, the first generating a conversation and the second is generating an embedding. So we're still coding against abstractions here. So the concept of our chat client and the concept of an embedding generator. And what this means is that we can now actually completely swap out Azure Open AI with a completely different AI service or a different AI model. So for example, if I were to just comment this out, so that goes away and that's gonna cause a problem down here because we no longer have a chat client assigned. This is just an interface up here. But then we can uncomment this block of code here, and this is using an Olama chat client. So Olama is a local AI model, which I have installed on my computer. So if we open up this other command prompt and I just run Olama, and again, I have another video on my channel of how to set this up, but that part isn't important right now. What is important is if we do Olama list, you can see I have a couple different models downloaded here. And one of them is an embedding model. So that's an alternative to our Azure embedding model. And Phi3 Mini is sort of a general purpose generative model. So this is kind of a loose comparison to what we were using for chat. So we have two local models that kind of mirror what we had set up in Azure. But what's really interesting here is if we navigate down into this Olama chat client, you can see this actually implements iChat client. This is coming from the Microsoft Extensions AI library, and it's actually implementing that iChat client directly. And because of that, we can assign it to our existing chat client, and that means its APIs will essentially be the same. So we still have our complete async and generate async methods. So we should be able to get a chat going and generate an embedding without changing any of our actual application code. So the only thing that changes is this line that configures our client. This would be similar to switching out your configuration code for an iLogger or for a different entity framework connection or something like that. Just this concept of configuring an underlying service, but then your code actually works with an abstraction and it doesn't care which one is wired up to it. So if I were to run this again, we should still get a proper response printed out in our console here, even though we're using a different AI service. And it looks like I have an error in my code here. Um, I actually wrote in the wrong model name here. So we actually want this gnomic embed. So I'll just replace this here and we don't need the latest tag. So a uh, small bug there, but let's rerun the app. And now we should see a familiar response printed out from our AI model. So first we have our chat model and then we have another embedding here. So just to prove this point again, I'll comment this out and then uncomment this and then I'll run this again and just by changing the configuration, we still get the same responses back. So we can go back and forth and we could change this out with another service, such as a standard open AI model that's not running on Azure or Azure Inference or whatever supports this Microsoft Extensions AI library. And so in our command prompt there, we do get our response back just like we'd expect. Now, one other thing you might've noticed if you're looking carefully is that this as chat client method we don't need to use that on Olama. So why is that? Well, well, it's because of what we looked at before, which is that Olama chat client implements that interface directly, but the Azure OpenAI client does not implement that directly. And that's why we have this helper method, which acts as sort of a bridge to implement that interface for us. So if you look at the tooltip here, it actually says returns an iChat client that may be used to converse via the OpenAI client. So for packages or types that don't implement this directly, that's when we have helper extensions to make that happen. And if we look at our NuGet packages, you can see we have two additional packages here. Uh, we have one for Olama and then one for OpenAI. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of kind of where .NET is going with this extensions library. 
essentially the goal here, I think, is to capture sort of common functionality that you might want regardless of which AI service or model you're using. And then you can just code against that interface or that abstraction in your code. And then later on, you can kind of pick whatever model you want and go from there. So this is kind of turning AI into a mainline service in your .NET apps, just like you would with logging or database access and some of these other kind of standard app setups. AI is becoming so mainstream that .NET needs this kind of built-in support for it like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It'll be interesting to see where this goes. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons to support the channel, and I'll see you soon.